Hi, I'm Gavin Sherrett from Mashbo, and uh, I'm looking forward to talking about digitalization today. It's Gavin's favorite topic, so we, uh, we're looking forward to talking about uh, Gavin's uh, white paper on uh, digitalization and uh, maybe exploring some of the uh, some of the challenges and opportunities that businesses have in this space at the moment. Uh, Gav, do you want to talk a little bit about why you put the white paper together and what the key key uh, points to take away from it are? Yeah, the key re reason why we've done this is, is an education piece. This is the fourth white paper that we've done. And what we try to do is educate people what digital and tech can do for their businesses. And what we're looking now with digitalization is how people can progress. We've, we've come out, look, we're in a pandemic, we're coming out of a pandemic and it's forced a lot of change, but some of the changes, digitization, not digitalization, that we're doing the same things just on a computer instead of using paper or in the office. So we wanna push people to go into that next step where we're bringing efficiency, we're bringing kind of extra profitability, hopefully, and better work-life balance in what we're doing with our clients. You talk about the difference between digitization and digitalization, and aside from the autocorrect challenges that that might bring, do businesses genuinely not understand the difference between them? No, we, we often get people coming to us saying, well, this is the way that we work. We just want it on the computer. And it's, it's great. It obviously kind of brings people into the modern age, but it doesn't bring improvements. We want to, you want to change the way you're doing things. Change is a big fear in business. It's a big fear in life, but having different minds, different mindsets, looking at it, you improve things. It's like we've got clients at the moment that we're totally changing how they're working and they're going to save hours a day on some of their processes, which allows them to go back to the human side of business that we've all been missing. The kind of interacting with people. So if we can get a computer doing the task and doing the task more efficiently and take out that human element, let people be people then. Businesses have had such a huge profound period of change over the past sort of 14 months or so. Uh, why is now the right time to really explore this? I think the right time is now because we've been forced to do something. So those barriers have changed. You look at today, I think it's a new that Sage spent millions of pounds on their new head office and now they've told everybody don't come to work. Uh, we're, we're working from home, we're working more sustainably now. So it's like, how can we how can we work from a coffee shop? How can we work from going to see family in a different part of the city or the different part of the world and still be at work? You're not just using holiday now. You're, you're constantly always working. So using digitalization just brings people to the forefront. It eradicates error as well. So a person is likely to make a bigger error than a computer. So we can streamline some of that. So the change is there and the time is now because we're used to it. We've been forced to get used to it. So we should roll the dice and go with it because it's been successful for quite a lot of businesses through the pandemic that they've changed that the attitudes of working from home are now actually it's a good thing most people will be working from home at least two or three days a week now so let's build upon that in the paper you've made basically five recommendations which are attributable for every type of business regardless of their life cycle do you want to touch upon uh, some of those recommendations and, wh and what they actually mean in practice yeah so uh, we kind of talked about a little bit like the remote working from home working remotely making it sustainable making it a balance so so that you can keep business going you can improve profitability you can you can improve that, that life balance between what we're doing so tasks of processing data or inputting data there's quicker and better ways of doing that which allow people to be doing their own things if people are happier at home and working from home and they've got more time to be human beings they're going to be far more productive in the workplace so that's what we're looking at in that kind of aspect and we've got some case studies in the white paper i won't jump into those because i want people to download it <laughs> and that white paper is free to download and we don't do any data capture on that either so we're trying to kind of have the, the ethical way of thinking of not scraping people's data. If people want to engage with us after reading it, they make the choice, we're not going to hunt them down. You've also got to look at the way that we're automating manual tasks in the document, that we all spend time doing certain key tasks where we're taking data from one system and putting it into another system. There's ways of letting the computer do that. So we touch upon that. We've got the contactless free working environment Again, we've worked on projects which have a case study where we're managing car parks. 
without the interaction of parking tickets and the allocation of spaces. So we can work better. And if we're working more fluidly in the office space, how do we manage desks? How do we manage that workplace where people are coming in and not coming in? So there's different things that people can think about. We've got to talk about the important aspect here, money and the financial side of doing digitalization. It's a serious investment, but we're, we're in a great place for the actual financial support for that. So in the document, we've got some great support from uh, Haynes Watts and Additions Accountants that have backed up our thinking and validated what we're doing. So how you can look into R&D tax credits from claiming 33% of your investment on the time that goes into this, but you've got to be aware that it's new innovation that you're working on. We're not just replicating something. So you, it encourages to push the boundaries, but then we've also now had clarification from, from the government that software is part of the super deduction. So again, it's like looking at the long-term impact and long-term value of what we've got here so that you can claim back on the investment um, in your account over the accounting period. The key part of the financial side is, is like, you do, need, you do need to have the cash flow to achieve this. And we don't skirt around it that yes, it's a serious investment and you need to do the investment into the consultancy side first to get it right. You don't wanna just jump into code, but that's a key critical thing. And we've also got the recovery support from the banks as well. So it's using that, using that available finance, which is affordable finance, in a wise manner. And again, it's like, we're software development consultants. So what we do is we partner with experts to advise on that. So when we start the project, we will bring in the likes of Haynes Watts to work with us and to kind of go, right, this is validating the R&D. Let's push ahead with the project. And then we've got the final part of it as well, maintaining that human touch. It's like really important that people are people. And again, we touch on one of our flagship projects in the white paper of the Hub of Hope and how that's grown. But again, that's through digitalization, not digitization. It's like looking at a process of people finding mental health support and pushing it so it gets bigger and bigger and to the point now where that application is advertised on national TV with the support of Network Rail. And we've got national car parks now, NCP, supporting the app. So every car park you go to there's, they're making people aware that there's help available. So the process of digitalization is actually in full swing there. We're looking at saying we're getting exposure to millions of people through a process that started with a spreadsheet to something that is now an application that is nationally based and getting constant recognition of what we're doing. The, the, the final point of your, your five point plan and, uh, and maintaining the personal within the whole digital relationship is really important. And of course, you know, we've seen that through, you know, the issue of, around the, the post office, which has been well publicized over the last few weeks where, where technology, where it isn't integrated with process and the human element is disconnected, it can cause tremendous difficulty. So how important do you think at this particular point in time is that point within your, within your five points in the white paper. How important is it that we all consider how this works with people? Uh, you have to bring the people on the journey with you because there's always fear of the software or the robots are gonna take my job. It's not a case of that. It's about how we make your job better, how we can use your personal skills in a more effective way. The, one of the projects that we case study in there is like, we've changed, we're changing the way that whole office is working. In, in the office and with their, with their team who are working on out in the field, how they interact with technology. Again, what we're doing is we're saving them paperwork. So actually they're still working the same working day, but they've got less homework to do. Do you feel that this is, a, is an exciting opportunity for businesses or one that businesses should be uh, be concerned about. I'm, I'm guessing the I'm guessing the former, uh, but how can how can that be articulated to maybe those who haven't maybe considered, you know, that sort of opportunity over cost consideration? I think you've got to look at the cost consideration and the fear of the investment because it's a sizable sum. But you've also got to look at the impact that comes in there, and it's it's not necessarily an instant impact. But there is fear of there of the change, fear of the expenditure, but you have to go through the process and do, doing the process properly as well. So whether you're working with Mashbo or another another vendor, it's like go through the consultancy process first, 
understand the requirements, understand the needs, because you'll go through something and you'll miss, you'll miss parts of it. And we have that with every client because something slips through the cracks. And it's how you kind of bring that into the project. And again, the way that we work, we work in an agile method, which means that we can change the brief and we can change how we're working, but you, you need to understand the, the main story first. You need to understand if somebody does something on a computer, what's the reaction? What are you expecting? And you can even bring that, that principles into day-to-day -day life of like, you know, if you're rude to somebody, they're going to be rude back. <laughs> But if you're nice to somebody, the language is going to be nice back to you. But again, plan the reaction that you want. So if I'm inputting some data, what reaction do I want? What what boxes do I need ticking? And what, what cog do I need turning next? And people forget about that. And it's really, really important. It's laborious. It's not exciting. It's not sexy. It's time consuming. But that, that investment is your solid foundation to make your digitalization work because without it, you, you create a white elephant. You create something that looks great, but isn't amazing. So Gav, I can't, I can't let, you, uh, let you go without uh, giving you the chance just to plug, first of all, where people can access the white paper and also uh, how they can uh, make use of some of your services. Yeah, so the white paper is available from mashbo.com. There's a link on our homepage. And as I said before, we've got no data capture. We're, we're kind of, we wanna be ethical in the way that we're doing things. So if you're interested, you contact us. The way that we work is we're looking for people that want to change. We want people to say, thrive through the challenge and the support that we can give them and to kind of say, connect them in the way that we want them to use technology. So we're not here to create websites. That we're here to create systems and software, which is using cloud-based technology, using the browser, using your mobile phone to transform your business or your organization and to get people engaged and to basically deliver results brilliant gav been great speaking to you this this morning uh, and hopefully everyone's got something out of that out of the video recording um i'm sure they'll take some fantastic insights from you and uh, we encourage everyone to uh, to download and read the white paper it's a really good read and you'll get a lot of insight from it thanks gav cheers paul thank you